Well, welcome to my July tips. Um, what a change in the weather we've had. Uh, as you can see, everybody's been shorn now, so they're far happier. Just about to feed the alpacas, then we're gonna go and look at some bees. And I'm gonna be telling you really about how to get ready for the autumn. Sounds a bit early, but we're only 12 weeks off September. And by then you'll have had to feed them, treat them, get the honey off. So I'll give a few tips on, on uh, honey harvesting. And also um, a little word about getting the bees in a strong state ready for winter. So that really needs to be done now. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more, more about that later. So without further ado, I'll feed my little fellas and we'll go and look at some bees your bees are still going to be really active in July but don't let that fool you still check and make sure your queen is there and laying okay because sometimes they look fine you've got supers on but it's actually queenless or something's wrong so during July maybe it's too late to split but what you can do is you can get queens by buying them and introducing them UK queens should be available now and also most importantly you need to think about juggling eggs and brood to rob Peter to pay Paul because the objective is when you come to August and September your hives have all got to be a minimum a minimum of six frames or more to stand a fighting chance of getting through the winter so don't be afraid of that that I find that quite um, taxing quite a, a mental challenge if you like trying to get the most out of your bees and making sure they all average out so failing that of course then during the latter part of the season the only option available to you is amalgamation and I'm not a fan of that when you put the newspaper there and you try and combine two very uh, weak hives you will find that sometimes it's not very successful you lose as much as you gain really so now is the time really to make sure everybody's got the queens and everybody's a decent size okay i'm now going to transfer some bees from a nuke box to a national hive so this is a straightforward transfer from a poly nuke to a poly hive i've reversed positions so that the poly hive will be in exactly the same location as where the nuke was and um, here we go, as you can see, it's bursting at the seams. They're not particularly very happy, because since I started filming, the clouds have come overhead, and the bees are sensing that it might rain in a minute. So I'm gonna be fairly quick about this. Um, the only thing you need to remember, really, when you're transferring, is try and create minimum disruption, and place the frames in the same order like that and if you can why not grab two at once so here goes look at that looking good I've also put in this poly hive a couple of drawn out frames with food in. I actually took them out of a hive during the rape honey season where they were getting in the way of the queen laying in another brood box. So I'm utilising that up and I'm also giving these a lovely head start. So there we are. That's the six frames in. Careful, there's still a wooden stick in the bottom of the feeder on this panes loop, so make sure that doesn't drop out. Okay, there we are. And then I've got one more frame to complete the 11. rain but then I suppose what's new there we are I don't think it will actually so little puff of smoke 
Before we move on to look at some um, supers, I'd like to mention it's July, but August when you've taken your frames off, your um, honey, then why not be proactive and get yourself the treatments ready for the um, autumn feed or autumn treatment and also why not just don't wait until your bees are getting overrun by wasps, get a few of these wasp uh, traps ready now fill them half with beer i'll tell you more about that on the august tips okay i'm going to go and look at some uh, supers now this is my superstar hive for 2021 i think this shows the benefit of taking notes because these have been consistently good they haven't swarmed they produced as you can see three good supers of honey so that's getting on for about 50 60 pounds of honey potentially Here's one of the um, uh, frames from the top super, so they're well full. Now, a little word about extraction. Bear in mind, if you've got some rapeseed fields near you, then a lot of your rape, or some of it at least, the early stuff, will be rape honey, and that sets particularly quickly. So bear in mind, hopefully it's still in liquid form inside the hive, reason being it's fresh and also the bees will store it at 35 degrees that's the temperature they keep in the core of the hive so don't leave it lying around extract it straight away if it has set then there's all sorts of ways i've heard of trying to get it running you, you can have warming cabinets i've heard people wrap them in electric blankets and all sorts or put them in near the radiator or in the airing cupboard you know good luck um, the other way of doing it is to melt it down and separate the wax from the honey it's not considered first class honey you shouldn't be selling it but it tastes perfectly all right and certainly it's okay for mead and for cooking and that sort of thing alternatively another little hint is if you've got some stuff that's set then just place it in a super and leave it underneath the brood box that way the bees will take it and put it into the brood or eat it whenever they want to and you can actually leave that on until the springtime no harm done and being at the bottom so beneath between the floor and the brood box means the bees should gravitate to the top and that's where all your eggs and brood will end up so you won't be left with a brood and a half going into the new season so that's a little handy hint for you We started top bar beekeeping last year, just for a bit of fun, and got quite hooked on it. Very impressed with the whole setup. So what I've done is designed and modified a top bar hive, which I feel would be more beneficial for the UK beekeeper. One of the big benefits is that the frames can actually fit inside a national hive. So that's a great way of splitting from a national hive and using your top bar hive. Also, you can see, the traditional entrance here nothing new about that but then if you come round to the far end you'll see that I've changed a couple of things firstly you'll see there's a an exit cone there for the bees to escape if they're caught between the top bars and the cavity I've also got a varroa drawer here underneath the varroa mesh there's another drawer the other side so it opens 50 50 and then if you come round the back here you will notice that there is a second entrance there which you can use if you want to split or change the direction of your bees or turn it round so that's another useful little feature there's also a large inspection window here and here are the bars I'm telling you about these will actually fit straight inside a national hive so you could put some frames in there the, the bees will draw it out and then you can just split it in the normal manner um, also this one will have a feature where you can feed from the top so you put a syrup feeder or your fondant feed on top of that particular bar and the cavity is big enough for a syrup feeder or a fondant block so works for me 
and that will be hopefully all being well uh, on the market for next springtime at a very good price well I hope you found July's tips useful um, Blossom here she's 10 weeks old today believe it or not she's only 10 weeks old have a look at this picture and see what her and her brother buddy look like unbelievable just in case you wondered she's not going for lamb chops like everybody around here they're just here for a nice time see you in August